Hi everyone, hope you are doing well. This is a tutorial on how to create neoplanes and whether or not you have to create them. Let's jump right to it. Golden rule of creating new planes is to define at least one and at most three references to have a fully defined plane. Let's start by creating a new plane in an empty field. Initially, you have front, top and right planes. Planes are here, insert, reference geometry and planes. Notice you have three references and a message over here that reads, select references and constraints. Since this is an empty field, you have only three planes. I'll choose the front plane and the message changes immediately to fully defined. And your first reference sets as front plane while second and the third are still empty. You have some options here in the property manager, parallel, perpendicular, coincident, at angle and offset distance. You have the mid plane option here, which we will cover later on. Things we can do with only one reference is to offset distance. Like this, you can have it more than one with the same distances here and you can flip them to the other side. If I'm going to go and choose my second reference here, it is the references are not valid. Because first I have four planes here, second, SOLIDWORKS cannot make sense of two perpendicular planes when the offset distance is activated. But if I choose the midplane option here, it becomes fully defined. What it does is it gives you the plane at a 45 degree angle between your two references. And you can either flip to this side or the other side. Okay guys, let's go to the other field which already has a solid body. Having that makes you more flexible to create planes. I'm gonna go with the front plane and instead of clicking here and here again, I'm going to hold the control key down and click on the random plane. Then I will be diverted immediately to the plane's properties manager. The first reference is set, so I'm going to choose the second reference. Say this plane here. You see this is fully defined, green. Notice it's perpendicular to your first reference and also tangential to the surface. If I choose parallel, it stays tangential and also parallel. I can also flip it to the other side and back. Now let's use this plane over here. Assume I want a plane exactly in the middle between this plane and this surface. Uh, this surface. What you can do is just to hold the control key down to go here again and choose this surface. It instantly activates the midplane option because that's the only option. And if you click OK, you can notice if you just change your surface over here, this plane goes with it. It always stays in the middle. Other options you have is just to click on the plane, choose parallel, and choose a point, and you'll get your plane over there. I'm going to do that again with the angles. Now for angles you need an axis. Therefore you need to choose an axis for your second reference. Let's choose this edge over here. There you go. Now you can play with it and adjust it as you wish. You can change the quantity over here, for example 10 degrees over here and leave it like that. Other option would be to choose all the three references. For example, if you would wish to have a plane that goes through here and here, you can choose this point, this one as the third, you can choose this point, and you will end up with a plane that goes through all of them. Nevertheless, you can just choose a point and a line, and it will give you the same plane again. Now, assuming you want your mid plane here at an angle, what would you do? Because you don't have any edge to rotate it around. You will have to draw a line on it. 
Maybe have it pierce to the body and go here. Click on the sketch and you can see it will happen again. You can have multiple planes here. Now it brings me to my second point. Whether or not you need to create a new plane. For example, I don't have any planes on this side. I only have one here and I can definitely make a sketch on it, right? But what if I want it here? Do I need a new plane? Not necessarily. Just click on the surface and choose a sketch. Then you can just keep drawing on it until you rebuild it. You see, the surface on a 3D body can also be used as a plane. Although, you cannot do that on any surface as easily. Because this was a planar surface and that's why it worked. If I had a curved surface like this, I wouldn't get the sketch option if I click on it. So, I can either project a 2D sketch from a plane on that surface or I can have other 3D options like SP line on a surface and draw whatever I want. This is called a 3D sketch which is laying on top of the curved surface. And last but not least, sometimes you don't need any new surface or plane if you already have a similar one at a different distance. Say I want to cut a hole on the surface at an angle. From here to here, I don't have to necessarily make a plane here, draw a circle and extrude cut it. I can simply choose this existing plane here and draw my circle on it, extrude cut it, exactly from the same surface. But I change my from option to offset, say 30 millimeters. Extrude it 25, that's too much, 23, there you go. This is the result I got. Um, let's hide them. This is the result I got, even though this sketch was on the surface. Basically, that was the concept of creating planes. I really hope you found what you were looking for in this video. Please subscribe for more SOLIDWORKS tutorials. Thank you very much.